Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing International Master Cascade in the five minute pool on ICC. This is a IM, and what are they all about? They're anonymous. Yeah, I feel like I played them before, but I can't recall. So let's play d4 here. Usually they play d6 or d5. All right, so in this position, white has a lot of options. I am going to play c4, which is the main move. And then I'll play queen b3, which I recently played in a tournament game. My opponent played queen b6 in reply, after which I went knight c3. I'd be willing to repeat that if Cascade would like. And he does. Okay, so let's go here. We're protecting c4. So my tournament game against international master Kasper Drozdowski went d takes c4, queen takes c4, and then I believe bishop e6. Can't re quite recall. e6 is interesting. I'm going to play rook e1 in preparation for a later e4. I might not go e4 anytime soon, but I want to have this at the ready in case the dynamics of the position demand it or encourage it. Hope you guys are doing well. I'm recording this shortly before I post. It's about 10.30 p.m. at night. I post my videos at midnight my time, U.S. Central time. I've had a very busy week so far, but I'm enjoying it. And I'm ready to play some chess. Hope I play well in these three games. Okay, knight a6, so probably the knight's coming into b4. It's a reasonable plan for black. I could play c5 and try to grab space, but knight b4, rook a4, there's a5. And I don't feel like I'm getting much of anywhere. I could play rook a4 first, but somehow that doesn't seem correct. I'm going to go bishop f4, so that if knight here, I have bishop to d6. They do have knight c2 then, though. So maybe that was not so accurate by me. But they play knight e4, okay. So if I take, pawn takes, knight e5 maybe. But then f6 looks like they're on the verge of trapping that piece. Maybe knight d2, but knight d2 they could take here. Hmm. I could get some reasonable play out of that, though. I could just play e3. But knight b4 could be an issue. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do this, though. If knight b4, I'm going to consider playing um, take, take, and then knight d2 and sacrificing an exchange. Let's see how that works out. This could be interesting. So I'm going to encourage them to play the knight in and take this pawn and try to use my minor pieces to create some confusion and grab some compensation. I think with this bishop out of play on c8, this is a reasonable plan. Now, if they don't play knight c2, then they have to tend to e4. Also, bishop d6 could be played in the future. It might be all right for them to play f5, though, having in mind bishop d6, knight c2. And they will win back the material. But I could see c5 being very good for me. I want to try to limit the scope of black's bishops greatly. Okay, so he's going to go for it, so let's do this. See which way black takes, if at all. You might just leave these. A lot of times when you have two rooks forked like that, you don't have to take one right away. So black might try to make me waste a move playing rook c1 or something, and then take whichever other rook is available. Yeah, so that's exactly what black is doing here. I think they're trying to go for e5. I can play bishop d6. And then maybe follow with c5. That looks like a pretty good idea. Yeah, actually, let's go here. Because if rook d8, I have bishop e7. So they can't even really consider that. c5, definitely possible. f4, also possible. I feel like this position is really nice for me but how best to play it. If c5, e5 is going to happen, I'm almost certain. And then take, take, knight g5, something along those lines. The position's opening up, and maybe not in white's favor. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to bring this back. That seems wrong somehow. Knight c3. Something about it. I could play rook c1, take, take, but again, they have that e5 move. Hmm. 
I'm at a crossroads here. It's hard to say. Knight c3, though. Knight c3, e5. I can play d5 then. Okay, I'm going to go knight c3. Not 100% certain about this. And in some respects, I wanted to leave c5 open for the knight to jump to, but it might be important to open this light square bishop. I think if black takes one of my rooks, it'll probably be the e1 rook to negate the pressure down this file. Okay, so let's take... Hmm. I can play f4. I can play the knight back to e4 if I want. Let's play f4. Try to gain a little space. I really think they should go for e5. They might play that soon. If not immediately. I'm down some time. I'm down a minute. By virtue of having thought for a while over those complications. He's just going to develop. Okay, now let's bring this back. I think that d6 square is looking juicy. If king e7, maybe c5 and try to jump in here. It's funny how long the tension has been kept with the knight attacking the two rooks. <laughs> Neither one of us wants to be the first one to break that. Okay, let's definitely dive in with the knight. Hmm. Bring our king up, maybe? Or maybe e5. He's going to go for f... Uh, or e4, rather. Hmm. Don't want to open the position prematurely. All right, I'm going to do this, though. i got to choose something. I feel like e5 is coming, but maybe I can play d5 then. e4 also maybe would have dropped the d4 pawn. So king f2 is helpful in a lot of cases. Okay, let's finally get rid of this tension here. And I like the fact that I'm going to be on a7. I think he needs counterplay. Otherwise, the position's too close. So I believe that he's got to go for e5 sooner or later here. Maybe d5 right away, but d5, he has c5, closing it down. Hmm. I could play for c5. Or maybe even knight b5. Knight b5 is interesting. Let's try that. I'm not completely sure about this, but I've got 42 seconds left. You could play rook e8. Whereupon I could play knight back to d6 if I wanted. Interesting. Now, but then he maybe takes here. Not sure knight b5 was good. We'll find out. Hmm. A lot to ponder with limited time for both of us. I think getting my knight back to c3 is pretty helpful. So I like the way that is going. I mean, if rook e8... Rook a e8. I could even just play the knight back and control e2 really well. Make sure his rooks can't invade. I'm on a7, so that's a really nice aspect of my position. Okay, he's trying to block out my bishop. Knight c7. Nah, I don't know if that's working, so let's do this. Okay, let's try to get this back in the game. Could be a big time scramble now. Let's do this. Let's see if he wants to take. I want to go b4, b5 for sure. This is actually looking good if I get b5 in. Maybe rook a6 as well. Pump up the pressure on this pawn. Okay. Hmm. Um, all right, I think I got to do that. I'm just going to play it that way. Okay, let's do this. If he takes, I play b4. Very long time now, though. He needs to move his king. I think... Okay, let's take here. Maybe bishop takes was better. We'll find out. <laughs> uh, let's do this. Go attack the bishop that way. Hmm, let's take here. 
and then let's push. And now he's just in big trouble. No, 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 mouse slip. Oh, boy. Ah, oh. <laughs> that was a total mouse slip. <laughs> and stalemate at the end. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a, that's a time scramble and a half right here. I was trying to play rook c6, after which he can just resign because bishop a6 is coming. But I slipped rook b6. <laughs> and then managed to weave a stalemating net somehow. <laughs> well, nevertheless, that was a real interesting game. I feel like right at the end... I was getting some good play with this b4, b5 idea. That's a, a, a typical plan when white has those doubled b-pawns. So let's go back and take a look at it. Yeah, I don't think the, the time scramble at the end really mars this game too much. It was mostly about the middle game and that exchange sacrifice. So we had this dual fianchetto on the king side. And right here, black usually plays either d5 or d6. So d5, c4, c6. I've talked about this position before in some of my games. Very common one. Uh, many moves have been played for white. Bishop f4, knight bd2. Or, or sorry, um, I should say back here before c4 has been played. Knight bd2, bishop f4, um, c4, b3, c3, knight e5. All these moves are playable. I played the main move though, c4. And I kind of like this plan for white. I have a affection for this queen b3 move defending the pawn on c4 so i feel like black's position is a little cramped and rookie one is a move i've seen before in this system i think it's helpful but black took and then played the knight to a6 kind of blockading on the queen side yeah bishop f4 seems like a good idea now i took a little time starting right about here deciding whether to go for this exchange sacrifice or not the engine says rook ed1 is good and then what if knight b4? Knight e1. Maneuvering, defending the c2 point, and trying to force this knight to a decision. I mean, this would be really nice for white, I think. Encouraging this knight to retreat, forcing it to retreat. Yeah, so maybe I don't have to push forward here. I like that reorganization the computer is suggesting. Rook ed1 and knight e1. It's a nifty little idea. Instead, I played e3. Just solidly defending the pawn on d4. Knight here, and this is my chance to avoid knight c2. But I looked at this for a little bit, and it seemed very interesting, so I just went for it. And the computer says for black, it's best not even to go knight c2, and instead play f5. Just defend the pawn on e4, and leave this, and possibly even this, on the table. And I could always play bishop d6, which is that fork on the rook and the knight, but knight c2 and black is guaranteed to get the material back, and black could have the two bishops. I thought about something like this, though. Okay, let's just say king takes f8. I thought about playing c5 and trying to get the knight here, but maybe they can quickly play for e5, as the computer is saying, before white gets a chance to play, like, knight into c4. So yeah, e5 opening the light square bishop, opening the dark square bishop against this. That looks very good for black. I don't think white is quite prepared for the lines to become open like that. So instead, black went for the exchange, although they didn't cash in on it for a while. Yeah, F6. F6 is probably a good move because it supports a later E5. So I can understand why they did that. The engine gives dead equality here, so that's an acknowledgement that white has compensation, but maybe not much more for the sacrifice material. Here I thought for a while, didn't I? Wow, yeah, I spent over a minute on this move, knight c3. I just couldn't make a decision because they're going to go for e5, and they're also going to take one of my rooks. And I want to open my light square bishop towards the queen side. I wanted really to clamp the position with f4, but e5 just seems like a good reply to that. The computer wants to do this move. And then if e5, take, take, b5, okay. Yeah, maybe just handling e5 with a single capture like that is a good idea. That very well could be take, uh, knight g5, going after the rook. Maybe bishop d5 ideas are possible as well. 
getting a lot of activity. Hmm. So I played knight c3. Yeah, and I thought maybe their better bet would just be to play e5 right away. And I was, I think I was planning on going d5 against that and trying to attack c6, but I'm not sure what's going on here. The computer rates black's chances as slightly higher. Seems still unclear to me, but... Uh, strangely, I mean, I don't want the position to become too closed. If my if the position becomes closed to the point where I can't prove compensation with my extra minor piece versus the rook, then I feel like gradually can open black can gradually open the position to their advantage. So even though I'm the one who has sacrificed the exchange, and you think I'd want to keep it closed to keep the rooks at bay, that's not entirely the case. Like I want to make a selective exchange. So like for instance, my bishop on g2 becomes active and maybe my knight can participate. I think in the game I did a reasonable job of that. F4, not sure about this move. It creates a weakness here that I have to watch, and it's harder for me to play this move when E3 is undefended. Yeah, the engine says, or for a second it was saying that I should just move the rook. You know, maybe something like this and play from here. But what if E5, D5 again, take, bishop takes. Yeah, White's got decent compensation here. Probably not much more, but I see the compensation. Rook e7, maybe going for bishop e6. Extra pawn for white on the queen side, though. So I did this, and now bishop d7, and I played knight e4. This seemed like a good plan. Get the knight back into d6 now that those dark square bishops have been cleared. He jumped in, then brought the king up. Maybe knight d6 is unnecessary, I don't know. But it also seemed to me that black waffled for a while and didn't play e5 when they should have. Like king g7, I know that makes way for a future rook f8, but it seems to miss the mark, and maybe e5 is the more direct way to play this, break up the position. Because by playing king f2, I'm kind of showing that I need another move or two to consolidate. So I feel like black could have taken advantage of that. Now, a real critical moment is coming up here where I played knight b5. That move might just be bad. <laughs> I was trying to attack a7 and use the power of my bishop, but the engine does not like that move. It says b4 is better. Maybe trying to support knight c5 or uh, pawn c5 with the knight on d6. Take, take, a5, b5, rook d8. This looks scary for black, but maybe they're okay. That idea is if I take, then this knight is under attack. Yeah, I think I could have improved right here, because knight b5 somehow did not feel like the right move. And the engine wants to go a5, which would save the a pawn, and also stop my play down the file. Yeah, that looks, that looks good. I like that. I was also thinking about rook e8, but I think I could play even knight back to c3 if I need to. Is this really that bad for me? a5, maybe it is, if I don't have anything down the file. Black is up a point of material after all. But they played e4 and then f5. But somehow I was able to uh, make some progress on the queen side using my pawns. So I started lurching forward here. Possibly not in the best way, but we were both getting pretty low on time at this stage. So I went c5, they took... I was feeling pretty confident here, even though I was down on time. B5. Oh, you know what I was most afraid of, though? It was take and then follow by rook b8 on the next move. So if I just took back, I thought this was a big problem. Because if this bishop moves, I lose the pawn on b2. So I didn't have enough time to properly assess what was truly happening here. Happening here, But yeah, b5 takes and then whichever way white takes... Rook b8 could be coming. Or I guess in the case of knight takes, maybe even a6 is playable. But for that reason, if black were to take, the engine wants to go rook a6 and try to pin. And then maybe knight d5 check and pawn d5 are possible with complications. So as played, black went rook c8. Now this occurred, and I played b4. So now I'm purely down an exchange, but... I figure that I'll probably win this pawn back, and my C pawn is strong. Also, we've got black tied down. I have an initiative. 
And from here, it was just an all-out time scramble. Looks like I played some good moves. Bishop c4 was good. And I totally thought I was going to win right around here. Yeah, you can see the eval is in white's favor, although I'm not doing the best job of it. Knight d6 was better. So they should sack the rook on b5 or trade the rook for two minor pieces immediately. Rook takes. Check. King h6. Take, take. And it's equal material. I do have a dangerous c pawn, but it might not be enough to win. Pawn up in the end game. Maybe white's king gets kind of cut out. Might be drawish. We won't investigate that, but... Now I'm definitely winning after black did not play rook takes b5 because they can't coordinate their rooks and my c pawn is too strong. But as you saw, I <laughs> I mouse slipped rook b6. So yeah, I was just trying to go here and then go attack the rook and win. Very entertaining game. Um, the exchange sacrifice, my verdict on it is it probably was not necessary and maybe black should not even accept it and just play f5 in this position, but it livened up the game. And I think it showed you how uh, games involving exchange sacrifices can be dynamic and intriguing. Because when you're sacrificing the exchange, often it's best to do so when there's a lot of other material on board so that your material deficit is kind of hidden and you have many more resources you can throw at your opponent. For a blitz game, I would do this again. Yeah, I think black has to play very precisely, especially from a position like this, to prove that the extra material is really worth it. It's only like one point of material too, mind you. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this game. And I'll be back again soon with another video. Talk to you guys later.